Hello everybody and welcome to today's video. Today's video is about some tips for new Christians. So if you're watching this and you were recently saved, I just want to say I'm so happy for you. Welcome to the family. This is the best decision you will ever make in your entire life. You now have a new heart and the spirit of the Lord is living in you. So today I have prepared for you 10 things to help you on your walk with the Lord. So number one, I want you to know that you have assurance of salvation. You now have a place in heaven with the Lord. Your name is written in the book of life and nobody can take that away from you. Now, let me also say, life is not gonna be easy now that you've just decided to become a Christian, okay? It's honestly, it's probably gonna get harder because you may have friends who aren't gonna accept your decision. You may have family who aren't gonna accept your decision, but you have the Lord to help you. He is with you, he is walking with you, and he will help you. You have the hope of eternal glory within you. You have the Holy Spirit within you. You have a future in heaven with the creator of the universe. And I just wanna add in here that you were saved by the Lord's grace and by your faith in him. This is what has saved you, by grace and through faith. Nothing of your own doing, none of your good works, None of that is good enough to get you into heaven. It is by the Lord's grace and kindness and mercy and his gift of eternal salvation for all who believe in him and make him Lord of their life. That is what has saved you. So now that we've talked about assurance of your eternal hope and glory in the Lord, let's talk about number two, which is prayer. So in its simplest form, prayer is talking to God. I'll even give you a formal definition. As the International Standard Bible Encyclopedia puts it, Christian prayer in its full New Testament meaning is prayer addressed to God as Father in the name of Christ as mediator and through the enabling grace of the indwelling spirit. So I actually just made a video about prayer, so I will link it either up here in a corner somewhere or down below in the comments, but make sure to go watch it because I tell you how to dive deeper into your prayer life. But for the sake of this video, I will say, uh, I'll just kind of summarize, develop a habit of praying, develop a habit of continually, you know, talking to the Lord, thanking the Lord, just making him at the forefront of your, con putting him at the forefront of your conscience, conscious, <laughs> I can speak, put the Lord at the forefront of your mind. So that as you go throughout your day, you know, you can say, you know, thank you, God, for this. Or, Lord, I'm going to the gym to work out. I, I dedicate this workout to you. Please give my body strength to get through. Um, I'm going to work, Lord. Thank you for a job. You know, just be aware of how the Lord has blessed you and thank him for all that he's done for you. You know, ask him for wisdom. Ask him for strength. Ask him for discernment. Ask him to guide your decisions to help you with anything you may struggle with. Like, he's there to help you. The Bible calls the Holy Spirit the helper. So he's obviously in here to help. Purpose of prayer is to talk to the Lord. It is not meant to be complicated. You know, you don't have to always have your Bible open and light a candle and turn the worship music on and just be in like a zone. It's like, no, you can be mowing the yard and be like, God, this is it's such a beautiful day. I'm so glad I have grass, you know, <laughs> something like that. So again, be intentional with prayer. Try to pray throughout the day. The Bible tells us to pray without ceasing. And um, I explained that a lot more in the video I told you about. But the point of it is just to be in like a constant conversation with the Lord and, and not just pray, you know, before meals or before you go to bed, but to really have that continuous, constant relationship with God. Number three, read the Bible. So I recommend starting in the New Testament, specifically in the Gospels. The book of John is a really good place to start. It shows who Jesus is, what his ministry looked like on earth, what kind of character he has, how merciful and kind and gracious he is, how he heals, how he restores, how he saves. The book of John is great. So when it comes to the version you should read, I would recommend either ESV, CSB or NLT. I think that these versions are pretty easy to read and that's very important if you're new to reading the Bible because you want to be able to understand what you're reading. I would also encourage you to join a Bible study group to help you engage more in scripture to be able to talk with each other about the scripture that you're reading, kind of dig deeper into what the Greek, Hebrew, Aramaic language is, like what the deeper roots of these words that you're reading are. You could go really deep, but a Bible study is very helpful. 
So I actually am doing a Bible study on my YouTube channel. Right now, I just have a small portion of the first chapter of John, but I do plan on continuing it and making it throughout the entire book of John. I would like to do this with other books of the Bible too. But for your sake, in this moment, I would recommend finding a physical group of people that you can talk with and bounce questions off of. Number four, attend a church and get in community with fellow believers. Now, why is that important? Let me read you a Bible verse. It's from Hebrews 10, 25. It tells us to not be neglecting to meet together, as is the habit of some, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day drawing near. Now, church is truly an essential element of a Christian's life. It's not a requirement for salvation, but God's word is very clear that we need it. It's a place where we as believers gather together as the body of Christ to worship our Lord and Savior. We go to learn from the teaching of God's word. We go to serve one another, to encourage one another, to build in, in the community and fellowship together as believers. So when we trust in Jesus for our salvation, we become a member of the body of Christ. We are told this in 1 Corinthians 12, 27. So there, are, there is one body and there are many members. So every person within the body of Christ trusts and hopes in Jesus for their salvation. However, each member serves a specific purpose and one is not more valuable than the other one. So with that being said, we should be involved in our church. We should be utilizing the gifts that God has given us to serve him and to serve other people. You know, maybe your gift is hospitality. Maybe you love hosting people, hosting events at your house. You know, invite people from your church over for a Bible study. You know, invite them for dinner. You know, have encouraging conversation and fellowship together. Make them feel welcome. That is, your gift is hospitality. If you're anything like my dad, your gift would definitely be fixing things. If there's a light bulb that needs changed, if there's a leak in something, a chair breaks, he's gonna be the first one they call to come and fix it. And that's his thing. He loves it because that's what he's good at. That's his gift. You know, maybe you sing or play an instrument. Maybe it's your talent that's your gift. So utilize that in church, you know, play, sing and worship. Use those gifts that God's given you to glorify him and, you know, bring joy to others. We are called to gather together. Church is important. With that being said, not all churches are created equal. Jesus himself warned us about wolves dressed in sheep's clothing that don't preach the truth. That is why it is so important for you to read and know God's word for yourself. We're told to test the spirits, test the messages that you hear, compare what you hear on a Sunday to God's word. If, you're pre if your pastor's preaching about a certain thing, take notes on what he says, go home and spend some time comparing it for yourself, reading it for yourself, ask yourself, ask the Holy Spirit within you, does this make sense? Does what he said actually align with God's word? Do not, do not just sit there and take in everything that a man says and believe it. Like you have the responsibility, you have the resources to learn for yourself if what he's saying is true. Pray about it. Ask the Lord. Be sure that what you're hearing is the truth. Please, please, please do do the work read the word it is so important for us to know the word and be able to stand on the truth so that we are able to discern if you know anything is false or untrue ask the lord for wisdom and discernment and for him to lead you to a church that preaches the truth so number five is to learn and grow ask questions to deepen your knowledge and to deepen your faith and y'all questions are a good thing questions are great i feel like when the topic of asking questions in church comes up, it has a negative connotation, but questions should have the opposite, the opposite effect. And also I feel like people are nervous to ask questions maybe because they feel like they should just have enough faith or maybe they fear being judged um, by the person they're asking the question to. But don't be afraid, do not be afraid to ask questions. I will link some reliable websites down below that answer pretty hard questions and very controversial topics. So I will definitely link those down below and you can just click on them and type your question in the little box on their search bar and it'll come up with, you know, that topic, maybe varying topics, comparable topics that can help you dig deeper into maybe why you're having certain feelings or thoughts about things. Maybe you question a verse and it'll be there to help you. But above all, pray, pray for the Lord 
to show you the truth. Pray for him to guide you to the right answer. Seek the Lord in this and he will help you. And I think I should add the, the order I have these things in, the order I have these topics in are in no particular order. I just feel like I should say that. Number six, repentance. So what does that mean? So if you have become a Christian, you realize that you are a sinner in desperate need of a savior. You have turned away from your old life and you have entered into a new one. So therefore, you know that you are sinful. You know that you're living in sin. And so you ask the Lord to forgive you. And he has forgiven you from every sin that you have committed and every sin that you ever will commit. And if you have asked him that and meant it in your heart, he has forgiven you. And that's not just coming from me, that's coming from the Bible. So as you go throughout your life, ask the Lord to show you areas you need to repent from. Ask him to show you where you fall short and how that you can do better. If you have come to know Christ, it is because the Lord himself has drawn you to him. So you know that feeling of conviction, that feeling that the Lord is trying to tell you something, that feeling that the Holy Spirit is trying to get your attention. That's not a feeling of condemnation. It's a feeling of, oh, hey, you know, I feel like I'm doing something wrong. Let me ask the Lord how to help me move on from the situation, how to turn away from it and how to turn to him. The Lord guides us and helps us because he loves us. If he just wanted us to be condemned, he wouldn't have sent Jesus to the earth to die for our sins and resurrect to life for us. So again, reflect on your life and see if you are living it how God has called you to live. And if you know that you aren't, be honest with God because he already knows. Ask him to help you turn back to Christ to turn from that sin, to move on, to move forward, and ask him to help you get back on the right path. Like, do not be discouraged when these things happen because the Lord already knows that you're gonna fail, you're gonna mess up, but he is always there to guide you and to help you. Definitely don't expect to be perfect because God does not expect you to be perfect. Number seven, be baptized. So just before Jesus ascended into heaven, he said, go and make disciples of all nations baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always to the very end of the age. So these instructions specify that the church is instructed to go out and teach God's word, to make disciples and to baptize those disciples. Jesus instructed us to be baptized. It is a representation of your new life, y'all. It's not only a public declaration of your faith, but it is a symbol of your new identity with Christ. You are identifying with him in his death, burial, and resurrection. It represents our death to sin, like going down into the water, and our new life. We're raised to new life with Christ. Romans 6, 4 says it like this. We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in the newness of life. So remember though, it is not baptism that saves you and it's not a requirement to be saved, but it is an instruction by God himself for us to be baptized. It is by God's grace and by your faith in Jesus Christ as your personal savior that saves you. Number eight, share your testimony. Share your testimony and share your faith with others when the opportunity arises. When people hear your story of how Jesus radically transformed your life, they see the differences in how you speak and how you act, they're gonna wonder why. They're gonna wonder, well, what happened to you? Like, why are you so different than you used to be? This gives you the opportunity to share the gospel with them. Because as you live your life, you're not only telling them how Jesus transformed you, but you're showing them by your actions. You never know how you can inspire someone. You never know how your story is going to impact someone and potentially change their life. But most importantly, your story of inward transformation gives God the glory. Number nine, serve others. Love your neighbor. Loving and serving others is a constant theme throughout the New Testament. Matthew 22, 37 through 40 tells us, Jesus replied, you must love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your soul, and all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment. A second is equally important. Love your neighbor as yourself. The entire law and all the demands of, of the prophets are based on these two commandments. Loving others is how we can best represent Christ to people. After all, it is the second greatest commandment. 
So love people with your actions and your words. Forgive when it's hard. Do something kind for that person at work who's always rude to you. Treat people with the kindness and mercy and grace that you yourself have received from God. Number 10, last one y'all, find a mentor. Seek guidance and support from a fellow brother or sister in Christ, a trusted pastor, someone who can help you with your walk in your faith journey. These people will build you up in Christ. They will encourage you, strengthen you, sharpen you, and hold you accountable. You were never meant to walk this out alone. So having somebody who can help you navigate your new walk with the Lord will greatly help you. Okay, let's do a little recap. Remember your relationship with God is your personal relationship him, but you were never meant to be an isolated Christian. We are meant to be in community with the other members of the body of Christ. God knows you inside out, down to the very number of hairs on your head. Pray to him, talk with him, get in the Bible, get in the word. He wants to hear from you. Get in community, get in a church, find you a mentor, find people who are going to help you get in a Bible study, learn from each other, seek guidance from the Lord, seek wisdom from the Lord, ask your fellow Christians for advice. Most importantly, trust in God's guidance as you move forward in your faith. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. I hope this video was helpful for you today. If it was, please give me a thumbs up. Be sure to subscribe to my channel and, you know, leave your prayer requests in the comments below. We want to pray for you. We want to help you on your walk with the Lord. If you have questions, please leave them in the comments and I will try my best to help you as much as I can. So we'll see you guys in the next one.